second. Awesome. Happy and blessed Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for plugging in today for our core rank training. Um, I'm honored here to just serve in this function for you. And what we're trying to do is just complement all the other avenues that we have available for us with regards to training. We know there are recurring webinars on a weekly basis that are offered even nationwide, as well as what we do as a team and everything that's available to us online through our very own virtual office space. Anyone who might be new, if this is your very first core rank training attendance, I want to welcome you and introduce myself so I'm not totally a stranger. My name is Myra Ferreira. I'm an executive sales director with this opportunity, and I'm based in Tampa, Florida. So by background, I'm from Long Island, New York, and I am a proud single mother of four children. I became a teen mom, which forced me to just step into responsibility at a pretty young age. By 15, I had my first son, and that really gave me a lot of determination to make things happen. I was bent on and certain to be sure to survive and be a provider. And of course, learning along the way, which we all do. So I moved to Tampa, Florida in 2004, and I began an entry level position in healthcare. And I wanted to try to grow, but I've had formal years of education, both in New York and here in Tampa. None of those years of studies ever educated me with regards to finance and credit like this program did. I was introduced to this opportunity by our um, senior vice president, Mr. Xavier Marrero, at a time that I really needed it. I had the unfortunate experience of being denied an auto loan. I think we can agree having a reliable vehicle as a parent, it's not a luxury. So in 2017, I went through the embarrassment of going to a dealership, very confident that my longstanding work history and the fact that I looked like my income showed me I could afford a car, uh, I was confident, again, clueless about credit, only to find out that I had a 504 and I was denied what I needed. So I turned around and walked away without a clue of what I would do next with regards to my credit. Xavier said, I have a program that can help you. And I began as a client. It did everything I was promised it would do. I've been super grateful for it ever since then. I was able to get a 210 point increase in less than four months with a 714 return to another dealership get approved zero money down for the purchase of my vehicle. And I started to really appreciate how much other individuals need this and they don't know who to go to necessarily. This is invite only. So take a lot of uh, self-appreciation in that, so to speak, you can be the key with regards to helping someone transform their finances. And as far as I'm concerned with this opportunity, their entire life. So I'm an executive sales director at this point. Uh, just continuing to strive and grow and serving as much as I can in the function of being a support and remembering what this journey has been like, having gotten started in 2018 as an agent and here for the long run, here for the long haul and just having seen all the growth overall with regards to our team and our entire organization is something that is very fulfilling, I think for all of us. I believe I can pretty confidently say that. So again, welcome if you are brand new. I'm looking to just add to the skills that we share and the information. So I'm gonna begin with sharing my screen and we take it from, from there. So be ready for some notes. Hopefully you are prepared in that sense. And then as I review this and wrap things up, then I can also go through some questions with you if need be. So uh, this, I do have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, man, I look horribly frozen on the screen. Anyhow. Um, with regards to, with regards to this information, uh, I want to just give credit to our executive vice president, Mr. David Marquez, and one of our vice presidents, Dr. Arnold Bogarty. They presented and prepared for us a power presentation workshop, and they were offering that over segments throughout several weeks. Now, this is something they definitely invested in. Uh, they are definitely, um, uh, phenomenal leaders, mentors of mine. I'm grateful for them, not only as friends, but also business partners and examples of taking this to the professional level. So I do wanna give them credit for this content. But um, let's start off with reviewing some of the highlights, right? When it comes to the skills you actually need in regards to this opportunity and running this type of business to the point of success, you need to be able to strengthen the ability to find prospects, learn and understand the techniques behind inviting prospects, or potentials and presenting your information or the products and services, in our case, United Credit Education Services and the Protection Plan membership. Also following up, 
closing, because at the end of the day, you can share all that you share, but if you're not closing and having any enrollments, you are not creating that income and getting people started. So being able to point them in the right direction, in particular, when it comes to those business partners of yours and when they get started, knowing what those goals are and taking them to the next level, as well as promoting events and off offering yourself to be guided by leadership. So again, that's what we provide here. Today, the focus will be on follow-up and closing. Uh, this was something covered on week six of the skill set training. So again, following up and closing. Now, the definition of follow-up, right? It's the process of completing an activity. So when it comes to business, especially uh, when you need to acquire new customers or close those customers, Following up simply means you're turning a prospect or a potential into an actual customer or a distributor or an agent and a business partner in this sense. But what is really following up? So simply stated, following up is just keeping the conversation going. Sometimes we may let things go too soon and also not follow up long enough, right? So here are some of the statistics when it comes to sales and how many follow-ups does it take? Uh, we can't just go ahead and accept one no or one being left un, on red and with no reply as the final answer. 48% of sales uh, people never follow up with a prospect. So we need to be the greater majority. We actually need to understand that that's not us, right? 25% of sales people make a second contact and stop. 12% of sales people only make three contacts and stop. And only 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second. 5% are made on the third. 10% are made on the fourth. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So when you look at the significant increase of the percentage for closing or actual enrollments, based on the number of follow-ups, one or two or three times is truly cutting yourself short on the opportunity of what this can mean, not only for you, but for the people who really need this. Think about how much is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. We keep extremely busy. So when individuals come across and see us share this information, let's say in the example of social media, they might come across that post on their newsfeed one time and they'll reply quickly, but as they move forward, out of sight, out of mind. That's where we need to step up and do our due diligence with the follow-up to that, right? So knowing your book of business is having a log or some way to actually track every person that you speak with, be it by message, be it by text, um, or of course, phone call. You need to actually have your very own list to this. And you know, I know we're in the digital realm and so much is done online, but at the end of the day, there's a great deal of even research showing that when you have something written down on paper and black and white, it gives you something much more trackable. So again, using a combination of these things, if it is that you're solely online or strictly relying on your devices, then just make sure it's serving you in that function. Uh, but also if you have it in writing and on paper, it can give you a visual of the sense of urgency with knowing you have this list of names to either reach out to initially or follow back up with. And also you're not basing it simply on your memory. You can actually go ahead and keep notes on when it is that these individuals, um, maybe they say to follow up at a certain time. Maybe they've actually told you when it's payday or next Friday and et cetera. So the truth is you wanna have something that's trackable. And another, Tip I'm going to give you too with regards to that. I actually learned this from David Marquez was something he did and it had to do with keeping a file folder of candidates. So any iPhone users, uh, we probably use screenshots very often. And let's say you have an individual who comments info on an agent post, or let's say we have an individual who comments info on a client post and you want to make sure you can keep track of, of that person by something more than just their name. You can go ahead and visit their profile on Facebook, screenshot it, and keep a file, a photo album in your phone for those follow-ups, right? And you can actually label it client follow-up or agent follow-up or, or Facebook follow-up or potential or something to that extent. Now that's a little more on your personal choice, but I just thought that was a really, really awesome 
uh, technique because honestly, who hasn't had a follow-up that they forgot to follow up with? I'll confess, that has happened to me. Now also, following up with uh, these potentials, two days after, two weeks after, four weeks after, but never even limiting it to that. Remember, a follow-up is continuing the conversation. So as this person, maybe they are a friend that you know, or someone that you're slowly getting acquainted with online, as they share things and updates for themselves, if it's their birthday, say happy birthday. If they are celebrating an accomplishment, go ahead and congratulate them. And even this tip from one of our regional vice presidents, Rachel Ortero, is in Facebook Messenger, if you change the theme, it'll actually refresh your message to bring it right back up to the top list of their unread messages. So they'll see you again. And really, again, with the percentages that we saw before this, two days, two weeks, four weeks, that three follow-ups just might not cut it. So keep in mind that this is something to do in the long run. Um, and again, true story, just this Saturday, I had an enrollment of a brand new agent, someone that I had not seen in person in over two years. And she and I had spoke about this opportunity over a year ago. We spoke again earlier this year, but it was her time. And, she, and you know, by reconnection and seeing what I had posted, I had always maintained that interaction. She went ahead and got started this Saturday. So follow, follow up with new announcements as well, new systems, events, giveaways, contests, trips, and et cetera. Everyone wants to know what's new. They wanna know what the big deal is. And another source of individuals to follow up with this is not only for those potential candidates that have not started that may begin. Think about pulling a customer report or a pre an agent report for those agents that you feel have gotten a bit disconnected and make sure you're always informing them about this new information, right? It gives you a list of contacts to actually go through and go to. Now, running those reports, like the customer reports, you have the ability to offer for existing clients the ability to upgrade as agents. And then also always feel free to tap into their connections by asking if they'd be willing to refer people to you. Because if they had themselves have seen results, uh, I will tell you one of my number one sources of referrals are actually my satisfied clients. I've gotten more personal referrals than many other venue avenues. So I would tell you that definitely works. And you never know when someone's life or mindset might change. You know, this is, an, uh, uh, this is a, I think a lifesaver, but a lot of people have experienced what it is to potentially have what they thought it was a secure job and having that change. You know, the COVID and the whole pandemic and that entire uh, impact nationwide has really changed our mindset on many levels. But also people have other experiences where maybe they were depending on something that's no longer there. So again, their circumstances change. So understanding that puts us in the position to be able to introduce them to this at any time that could benefit them most, right? So what do you do when you follow up? You can use a story, either your, your own or someone else's, and you can post it on social media to celebrate. Remember, um, there's themes such as Testimony Tuesdays where you're able to acknowledge and celebrate, let's say a client that was approved or a first time home buyer. And as much as you have your successes, no accomplishment in this type of opportunity is too small or too insignificant. So as you have your score increases, share them. As you're able to get approved or maybe purchase that vehicle or refinance, sometimes you may have those achievements that might not seem like they're that big of a deal, but that might be a determining factor for someone. A lot of times people want to see results before they go ahead and decide for themselves whether or not to begin. And again, you want to as well be plugged into a page or a Facebook group that has these testimonies. Uh, one I can think of offhand that I know I was introduced to very quickly from joining the program is get your finances lit here. So uh, always be sure to post compliant results and increases, but definitely understand that people need to hear and learn about the successes on this journey. Um, some of those conversations could even be like, hey girl, listen, can you believe I got approved for my dream place or I'm able to move or I'm buying my dream car? Uh, and those types of conversations that are genuine and they can feel that in your energy. You can always use videos as well, um, inviting to webinars and team trainings as well as uh, the PS3 system and that's not the video game system it's speaking interest and then of course you know setting up the 
uh, edification and the whole connection of being able to use your upline and rely on that level of expertise, as well as call to action. What is more beneficial to you? So you can really rely on that let's say a client or a potential client that reaches out, they've already disclosed to you that they have a horrible score. Maybe they're in the 500s. They are tired of being a renter. They have maybe an increase to their rent they're not happy about, or they're more motivated for one reason or another to purchase a home. But if they don't take that step forward, they're not gonna see those results. So again, you know, with pointing out what's more beneficial to them as far as staying where they are or moving forward for progress is one thing to keep in mind. And remember, your first conversation will not close all deals. If we, if we sit, sat there and really gave thought to what it has taken some of our highest income earners, the most successful leaders on this journey and overall in this industry, what has it taken for them to reach that level of success? They have been told no more times than probably most of us combined have ever even introduced anyone to this opportunity. And also having the mindset of doing this until they tell you to stop. So um, here's the thing. Some people have actually said to me, I thank you for following up with me. I know it hasn't been my moment just yet, but keep me posted, keep me in mind. I will circle back around when it is my time. So you never know what they might have going on. You know, if, if they're one that might actually open notifications or halfway see messages, right? That might go down to the bottom list of other notifications they have. So you are truly serving them in the saying, or I'm following up with you because I care. I remember you said it was important for you to get this done. When are you looking to get started with seeing those results? And, you know, the three magic words, we can definitely use this as a model for Fridays, follow a Friday. Um, you can spend at least 30 minutes of the day on a Friday to either post or connect or reach back out and even including your team in that so that everyone can follow up with their potentials too, because Fridays is a payday, generally speaking, and that individual may have not had the funds to get started, but if they want the optimum and the most buying power, they do want to get working on their credit, as well as the first and the 15th of every uh, month or you know, Thursdays and Fridays, because it's a combination of as far as paydays. And the SW rule, right? Some will, some won't, so what? Who's next? And this is an example of the follow-up scripts, but we do as well have many either in bands or in our groups, but you feel free to take a screenshot of this. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. It's definitely not new, but you know, of course you have to build the rapport and have it be someone you've had that connection with and then ask, hey, did you get a chance to review the information yet? Okay, great. And you can give a personal testimony at that point prior to them beginning and asking them once they've seen the overall program, what did you like best about it? And then of course, elaborating in that discussion, having notes ready so you're able to relate to them again. So you remember if you do follow up and they don't close at that moment, you can touch base and have had that real connection. And then, okay, as far as anyone that wants to get started as an agent, asking them, you know, do you wanna make a little or a lot? And then helping to set the expectation of what that will entail, as well as getting from them why either them being a client matters or why them being an agent and partnering with you matters, right? And then also assessing, you know, at your current job, how long would it take for you to be able to achieve those goals? Some people might not have an option at all. They may realize that their job is not going to get them there. Whereas others may say, oh, it would take me, you know, beyond a year and et cetera. But in this case, we can help them based on their needs and their goals and that time frame to be on the fastest track possible. So in the art of closing, right, we're going to go into that definition. Closing is a sales term, which refers to the process of making a sale. So the closing is the final step in the final transaction in sales, and it is used more generally to mean the achievement of a desired outcome. Um, and you may accomplish this with the exchange of money or acquiring a signature. Now, understand that every single day you are either sold or being sold. I mean, you are either selling or you are being sold. Um, and if you're wondering what I mean, I can give you an example. If you're in a relationship, if you've ever gone out on a date, if you've ever negotiated even with your kids, now our kids are the best closers, <laughs> I promise you, right? Well, all you have to do is tell an eight or nine or a 10 year old what it is that, that they want to achieve and they're gonna break it down and figure out any way possible to get you to close and agree to what they're asking for. 
So in this, it's an exchange of belief. It's also with that individual knowing the value they're getting by making that decision and why it matters to them, why it's important and why they need to go ahead and get started. So a fun fact about closing is that studies indicate that 63% of all lost sales occur because the salesperson never asked the client to buy. Look, so for anyone who might be a little newer on this journey or a little more recent on this journey, it's a new language sometimes. And we, for some reason, when it comes to the exchange of money, if we have any hesitation or doubt, we might be more reserved and not go ahead and actually ask, are you ready to get started? Okay, I'll take your card or let's sign you up. Let's get you registered right now. So understanding that you could do everything else perfectly leading up until that point, but don't be part of that 63% that does not ask for the clothes because they're not going to go ahead and act. You need to help in serving that function. So getting them closed and getting them started definitely is a great deal related to you and how you handle it. And then you need to understand your posture. Your posture is key. We don't need to beg anybody to join this business. Understand, I don't have to know or be convinced as to whether or not somebody's credit is good or not good. They know what it is. And they're gonna be reminded of that the very next time they get a close, they get they get a denial for something that they want or something that they need. And you know, you don't wanna be one flat tire away from a financial devastation. So as far as money, I'm sorry, that's not an excuse. At the end of the day, when you improve your credit, you keep more of that money in your pocket, your very own hard earned money. And versus when you have poor or negative credit, that over the lifespan you end up spending you end up paying over a million dollars in, in regards to interest rates and fees over the course of a lifetime. So it does add up. So you don't need anyone to join you or you don't need anyone to get started. You have to have the mindset and attitude of, I've got what you need. When are you ready to let me help you with this? And you also need to look at this as an interview process. And what do I mean by that? Or what I think I can, what this makes me think of is, if you have to convince someone as to whether or not this will work or whether or not they really want them for themselves, want this for themselves, they might also be either the client and definitely the agent that does not do their part. So the last thing you want is that someone who really wasn't determined and made the decision wholeheartedly to get started, that that be the individual that never activate their services. Or maybe that's the individual that never mail out their dispute letters or never send in their results or responses from the credit bureaus with those updated reports to our documents department. Because those are the first ones that allows them to turn around and say, hey, listen, I've been paying $90 for the last three months and I've seen absolutely no change. But you can turn around and ask them, did you log into your smart credit app? Have you taken a look to see what the changes are? Have you gotten this correspondence in? So if you have those points of confidence, you can always serve in redirecting them in the best and the most appropriate way. And trust me, your prospect can sense neediness just like a dog can sense fear. Energy will speak louder than anything you could say. Uh, and yes, you can say, hey, listen, I'm running a promotion. If you're able to actually get started tonight, I can extend a discount for you with the discounted enrollments, but it'll not only help me achieve my goal, but put you on track sooner and faster. Would you like to take advantage of this $50 discount or $100 discount, whatever your choice is, but there's an exchange of understanding there. You're letting them know, yes, it's a deadline I have. I mean, you can use those things perhaps on close of month or the close of the week if you're looking to help someone get promoted or achieve their five, like striving for five. But at the end of the day, they're, they're doing themselves the biggest favor, if that makes sense. And people join others with strength. They don't join weakness, right? A lot of times people will actually be in need of someone who can help guide them someone who can help you know, strengthen their beliefs and maybe be the positive light, whereas they're potentially surrounded by the opposite. And we need to always continue to be that and know that there's too many facts in our favor with regard to this and how powerful this program is than anything that could deter us or that should ever deter us from being able to achieve all the successes we want with this opportunity. And as well as understanding professional sort, I'm sure so. Now in this, in industry and in particular program and opportunity, you want to be moving forward so fast and that you focus your energy on those that are ready and have decided to lock in and begin, 
versus trying to drag others from behind to see if they want to do it, right? We're looking for eagles, not chickens. <laughs> and uh, also every once in a while, you need to be able to take this away, right? So you need to be able to disqualify individuals. I think that this comes a little bit more along the lines with the agent aspect. And what we mean by this is if someone starts being off the wall, very ridiculous, you know, just uh, difficult, they're presenting as if you need to convince them to start. Also just asking questions that waste your time. Or if you're introducing them to the answer and you feel like they're ignoring what you're saying, you have to have the confidence and posture to say, you know what, I don't think you qualify for this, but thanks anyhow, you know, thanks for checking it out. Thanks for your time, I appreciate your questions. But I've got other people right now that are actually waiting and they've made the decision to get started. Because again, these individuals are most likely the ones that will turn around and give you a bad rap, uh, defame either your character or that of this company and opportunity simply because they are a negative Nancy's, you know, and they're gonna be that way on their own, seriously. So closing starts with you in regards to the posture, in regards to your confidence. You don't have to have your personal success story just yet in order to succeed. Your excitement will also fuel your posture and your confidence. Understanding that you were introduced to this and we all make the absolute best decision that we can with all the information that you know. So don't let somebody else who might be like, oh, this sounds a little too good to be true. Don't let that person take away from your intelligence to knowing you made an adult decision. Have unshakable belief with regards to what you're presenting gather your arsenal right and fill that with stories again results testimonies increases and then in the meantime while you're building and creating that for yourself definitely rely on your upline and your mentorship support to get that done so you are a consultant not a salesperson people hate to be sold if they think that it's just an exchange of money they might automatically build up a resistance they might have had past bad experiences where they've made purchases that ended up not being what they thought they were getting. But, you know, of course, the most effective way of closing is asking those questions where you're prompting that individual to tell you themselves why they know they need to get started. So let's say in an example, um, I'm interacting with Mary and she says, hey, uh, I know you can understand with credit. You're doing something in regards to that. Um, can you tell me more information? So, of course, starting out with asking them, great, what is it that's currently affecting your credit score? Or do you know what negative factors you have or what a range of your current credit score might be? And she'll turn around and say, I have some late payments. I have a repo, um, medical bills. And I think my score might be 550 the last time I checked. And then turning around and just asking, okay, so what are some of the things you wanna actually accomplish with regards to increasing your credit score? Well, girl, listen, I am done with my landlord. Um, I'm tired of this beat up car. It keeps leaving me stranded. Or I really want to go ahead and plan on not having to renew my lease again and purchase a home. So in those conversations, I can also gather from that person. Oh, so, okay, you want to purchase a home for your family? Or even listening to have that individual explain, I currently drive a lot for my job and it, it sucks when I'm in an uncomfortable vehicle or I want to be able to travel you know, cross country with my family or whatever the case is. And uh, again, just even with the goal of home ownership, what kind of home would you like? Oh, so you have kids. Oh, all right. I'm sure you probably want a four, you know, four, two, right? Or I don't know, five, three or five, two and a half, whatever the case is. But you want them to also have the vision and idea on what this can mean to them. So that when you come back and circle around for follow up, hey, so when are you looking to get started on getting that much closer to qualifying? For your home purchase and you can interchange a lot of that those are just some general ideas of course and being that active listener will allow you to build that rapport um, they don't care people don't care how much you know until they truly know how much you care because information is out there almost excessively but the human aspect to that and that actual relationship that you can build is the reason why people will partner with you versus almost anyone else and remember Individuals can actually go ahead and work on their very own credit repair and restoration. Do they do it? Absolutely not. 
<laughs> the majority don't, which we've seen, but we offer a system to get them there that much faster. Because as a joke, I would always say too before, I could represent myself in a court of law, but I'm not playing. I'm gonna go to the experts. And here with regards to closing, let's look at the six closing questions. Again, what did you like best about what you, saw, you just saw? On a scale of one to 10, based on what uh, I just showed you, where are you as far as interest? Now we don't wanna work with anyone that's maybe a one to a four or five, you know, even a six is kind of questionable. But when they're seven, eight, nine or 10, now you can also ask them, okay, so if you're saying you're a seven, what is it that would it, what it, would it take to get you to a 10? And again, this is just the interview question where you're trying to see whether or not they even qualify. Because if they turn around and give you an objection that is something you can support contrary to, for example, a lot of times people may wanna do something but they just have the fear that they might not have the knowledge or skill set to do it. Or they might think, is it really real? Is it possible? Can I do it? And would you help me? So if you're able to introduce them to, yes, this is a proven system, again, sharing a testimony, maybe your own story or that of uh, another example that is relatable. And then also explaining, we offer the training. I'd be here to support and mentor you the entire process. And of course I can help you. That might very well take a seven or an eight up to a 10. Even when it comes time, when it comes to considering time, if people think that time is an obstacle, you can share a story. I mean, my own, I was working 40 to 60 hours a week. I started sharing this information less than part-time. Divorced mom of four at that time, head of my household um, with children in different schools. The last thing I needed was another job, but I knew I needed change. And my decision and my motivation to accomplish that change was much more significant than whether or not I thought I had extra time. So also asking how much money would be worth your time, right? How much, how much uh, money would you look to make in this opportunity that would actually make it worth your while? And with whatever that dollar amount is, how many hours per week can you commit to getting that done? You can't have somebody tell you they want $1,000 more every week but they only have five hours a week to get this started, right? Now also, how many months would you be willing to work on this in order to achieve that level? Because we all begin and then we all grow on this journey. As well as if I could show you a way to create that extra $500 a month you just said is a goal of yours, would you be willing to follow and join and get started? And you know, again, these are some examples of closing. So what did you like best about it? I like making money and utilizing the product or on a scale of one to 10, right? I would say I'm about an eight. An eight, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't be able to close that person or have your upline on maybe a three-way call, close that individual. Uh, an eight might just really want to understand they can change their sense of being nervous or, or you know, intimidated to understanding that physical symptom is really excitement at the same time. And also how much money you'd like to make? 500 a month, and how much time would you have? Maybe 15 to 20 hours a week? And how many months do you think you'd be willing to work at this? I could maybe take about six months or so before quitting uh, if I don't achieve that number. And then if I could show you a way to earn $500 a month over five to six months, would you be willing to get started? So bonus tip again, a simple closing technique is, um, you know, what did you like best? The products, uh, the business, or basically what did you like best? Being able to work on your credit, being able to make some extra income or both while you can fix your credit and help other people to get paid. Awesome, me too, always be relatable. So if I could get, the, so if you could get the products and services even for free while earning extra income, would you do it? And then awesome, it sounds like you're ready to get started. Welcome to the team. I can tell you that that line right there, awesome. It sounds like you're ready to get started. Welcome to the team. I've literally repeated that, that line or something similar to people more than once at times. And then they may come back and have another question. I, again, answer their question, but listen, it really sounds like you're giving this serious thought and that you're ready to get started. Congratulations, welcome to the team. Let's get your application filled out. So closing in the closing, you need to create a world that they want to live in based on what they desire. Always casting vision and allowing them to tap into that ability 
where they can see themselves where they want to be, where they can see that their goals, their wildest dreams really is uh, something possible for them. That's the state of mind where they want to be. So a lot of times that I, you may have heard me in past trainings are saying, I feel like it's kind of us against the world. You know, I need more people and I would like more of us to remember who we were or who we are before growing up in a world that tries to tell us who we cannot be. Uh, you can be a world-class closer by practicing those questions and repetition is key. Um, and of course, repeating that and, and, and focusing on, on whatever skill set and technique you want to strengthen over a given set of time. And all we're doing is uh, helping our candidate make a decision. And communicating that to them is very reassuring. So when you, when you tell people, listen, um, it just sounds to me like you already know your decision. It just sounds to me like this is exactly what you need. It sounds to me with all that you've explained, you know this program will get you to your end goal. So let's go ahead and get you started. So. That was my share as far as the slides, but we have a few more minutes and I would love to just open it up if anyone has any question that they believe I can help with or anything they'd like to just go ahead and ask, feel free to do so. I'm here for you all. Great info, Myra. You're welcome. What's going on, Chad? Much. Any questions? You're welcome, Yida, I appreciate it. Any questions at all? Yeah, I kind of got the cheat code, right? With that, uh, with the presentation slides, I ain't going front. So let's see. So Rebecca has asked, how often do you follow up with clients to make sure they're on the right track? That's a really, really good question because in closing, you don't want to go ahead and have made all that effort just for it to be somebody that cancels or comes out uh, has a retraction and ultimately that impacts your pocket uh, and gives you that bad rep, right? So as far as the clients are concerned, when someone gets started, a good point of follow-up, when you think of if they've actually activated their services, if you're sure that they've began and, and initiated the restoration process, you want to get confirmation that they sent those initial sellers, excuse me, sent those initial dispute letters out. Now afterwards, understanding that the credit bureau have up to 45 business days from their time of receipt to reply, even, even about every um, like 60 days. So in, in, in two months from when they've gotten started, you should be able to at least touch base with them and uh, keep it something simple like, hey, I just wanted to say, I appreciate you getting started. By the way, have you gotten any other updates? And also I, welcome my clients to contact me even before they contact, contact support. Now I make it very clear, listen, if I'm on a call and I cannot answer, uh, right now my phone's on do not disturb, but if I'm either driving or traveling and I cannot get your phone call, corporate support and client services is available for you Monday through Friday from nine to 5.30. So you always wanna know and wanna make sure that they know it's not a one man show so that they can only rely on you. Cause I've had clients in the beginning when I was learning this say, Oh, well, you never answered my call, so I guess I can't use this program. And I've had to learn from that. So I also made it very clear that in addition to reaching out to myself, I would love to help you anytime. Understand this is my cell phone number. So you can shoot me a text and my hours are flexible and et cetera. But when it comes to getting the help that you need, client services is there as well. So hopefully that answers your question. I'd say about in the beginning, making sure they initiated their services within their very first week. Uh, by simple confirmation. And also then afterwards, about 60 days to make sure that they mailed it and received responses and then also provided the correspondence to our documents team. Another thing as well is when you run client results or pardon me, client reports or customer reports in the back office, you can actually get in the details section, whether or not that client has ever provided the updated credit bureau reports to our corporate office. So you don't know where that is, make sure you dive into your customer reports. When it lists these clients on the right, you'll see details. You should be able to click on that. It'll tell you the dates that their dispute letters were generated. And then based on that date, you can do an estimated time frame for when they would have or should have received a report back from the credit bureaus with those updates and then have them take it from there. So call them out on it too. 
I've had a client that tried to say, hey, nothing, you know, I keep sending letters, keep sending letters. And then I circle back and asked, have you received any responses from the credit bureaus? Understand we're a nationwide company. Our attorneys can't go into your mailboxes and it would be absurd of me to try to act like I can go get your mail and correspondence way. I can't do that. So whatever mail you get, consider it like if you've hired a, an injury attorney, God forbid, and that you're able to actually consult with the experts throughout this process. So again, just highlighting that with them and making sure that you remind them of their responsibilities in this process, I think are very, very critical. Any other questions? And you're welcome, Rebecca. And I see Brandy saying I follow up weekly. That's awesome. Um, you also wanna set the tone for something a little realistic too. So if you have an automated response system or if your time allows you for your quantity of clients to be able to follow up weekly, that, that's fine. I, I wouldn't necessarily say within a week, there's gonna be too much of a difference, but the key points on when to follow up is making sure they've activated their services, gotten it all started correctly, and that also they continue using the other services throughout the process that they've set things up, that if they are needing to build credit, they've applied for their secured credit card, or that they've actually went ahead and secured credit my rent, if they're those individuals that don't have enough of those positive trade lines. And then in those responses, making sure that's uh, maintained current and up to date, as well as whenever clients are now eligible to upgrade and become agents, because you'll get a report of that in your back office. And if you check on that once a week, then you know anyone new that by that date or that third payment, now they're eligible to go ahead and upgrade and become an agent and partner with you, right? Any other questions? Hmm, what's going on, Brandy? You should be able to unmute your line, I believe. If it is, you said yes for a question. May, thank you so much. No question, but that was an amazing training. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. A lot of solid information. Definitely took mental notes, even though I was driving, but definitely took a lot of mental notes. So thank you very, very much for your time and your commitment to us always. You're welcome, Cindy. Love you, sis. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate everyone here. Anyone else have any other question? Just one quick question. Uh, this is Manny Martinez. Are we going to ever get back on the payment thing like we had with Klarna? Are we ever going to get back on the payment thing with, what was that? You said Klarna? Yeah. So what do you mean specifically? Well, you know, like if, if an agent wants to enroll or, you know, like we was doing at first, that we had a payment plan for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So if I'm understanding your question. Myra, or... I can answer that for you if you want. Um, I mean, I think, I think I, I think I can, <laughs> if I'm wrong, I mean, you could definitely go ahead and I appreciate you. Uh, but I would say with credit with Klarna getting started when you, when you have anyone that enrolls with that type of payment option, where it's a payment plan, um, I think, I mean, it is personal choice, but you need to be very clear. So that individual knows that on top of the payments, they're going to need to make with Klarna to make up for that initial getting started payment, they're also gonna have their 89 next month. So, I mean, I'm not saying absolutely don't do it. Uh, I've had clients that have done it. I've had agents as well that have offered that to agents and clients that have enrolled with them. So if it's a matter of timing and placement, if it's a matter of someone that's saying, okay, look, in three weeks, I'm gonna have all of it, no problem. Let me get out of this quick fix right now. I get it but you wanna be very careful that someone doesn't get started with something such as a payment plan like what Klarna offers. And then they're now hit with the payment for Klarna and then also the 89 monthly. For that, I would think you might wanna actually get them on a trial run. You might wanna get them to have a book of business already because if I'm a person that, let's say I have an untouched market and I have X amount of friends and you know I have very good credibility and I could definitely have 10 to 15 people get started, then I would truly say, make sure that you have that communication and conversation with your leader. So this potential, instead of worrying about those 299 or 188 to begin, they're really seeing the power behind, man, today's Wednesday. And if there are 10 to 15 people that by this Friday can go ahead and get started, I need to make some calls. 
Hey, Ma, you think I could borrow a hundred bucks? Hey, bro, you think you got a hundred on me? Listen, you know, the other day. So one of the notes I remember taking at training that Erica Stanford offers too, is that you want to think about five people that you love, five people that um, are the most successful, oh, pardon me, 10 people are the most successful in your circle of, of uh, acquaintances, friends, people that you personally know, and five people that owe you a favor. So if you had to divide that 299 by five, it's not that big of an elephant in the room as if you feel and you know, my bank account doesn't have 299 in, in it right now. So hopefully, you know, there's no one strict solid way of doing most things when it comes to this opportunity. Get with your mentor, whoever's actually doing those three-way calls with you. Um, I would definitely say, listen to whoever's doing something that you see the success in them that you can connect with and relate to and that they're there for you. But when it comes to any of those payment arrangements, at least to get started, my take on that is, not that it's an absolute no, but make sure they're understanding what they're committing to, because if they go ahead and get started and, and kind of lift their foot off the gas pedal and they're not a quick starter, then they might be hit then with the fact that they don't have the payment obligations to stay current, stay active, paying back Klarna as well as their 89 or waiving their fee. So the best case scenario for that might be with a direct action plan for quick results, with a target date, with knowing, okay, We'll go ahead and get started today, but that means that in the next 10 days, we're going to have 15 people enrolled, for example. Now you've waived your fee for the five, you've made money, a return on your investment, profit, and you could square away whatever you owe, and money is not an issue with regards to staying locked in and staying active. So hopefully that helps or assists in your question. I don't know, uh, oh, Sharif. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, it was an awesome answer. I, I, it gave me a lot of openings in my thinking but i thank you so much for all that information my pleasure thank you as well for speaking up so i don't know sure if there was anything else you wanted to add to that no I'm good. no that that was that was a perfect answer because you provided the solutions that we kind of all really want to show everybody that we have multiple solutions and it's just the main understanding that klarna is definitely a third-party tool and has absolutely nothing to do within our platform directly. And I think that's where a lot of people were getting mistaken when the calls were being made to corporate. Um, oh, but I paid Klarna. Klarna has nothing to do with us. It was just, it, it was just one of those loopholes that happened to work with our link. Right. right. And another thing I would say too, I know when Klarna and those payments uh, options have come up a lot, it has been for maybe events, uh, maybe something specific, not necessarily this partnership, neither as a client, because it is a subscription, remember month to month, or owning your own business and partnering with our company as well that has an out-of-pocket month to month, unless you waive your fee and getting your five. So again, thank you, Sheree, as well for that. Um, I didn't have that really come up on my clients and agents side. That's how I spoke about it. That's how I addressed it. Um, and then, of course, we are independent business owners, but our leadership and our mentors are always going to give us the best advice that they can from what they've learned along this way. So um, it's 653. If there's any other question, I'm definitely open to it, but I don't want to overextend or tie you all down too much longer. We have some additional training and webinars tonight, but is there any other questions someone else has that I can help with? Can I get a quick question in? Um, can yes. we talk about bankruptcies? Because I have two people who feel like, oh, well, everything is okay because I filed bankruptcy, so I'm okay. But like I was trying to explain to them, just because you file bankruptcy doesn't mean that the debt's still not there. You know, I mean, you know, you, you still kind of like, so what, what do you do with a person who's like that? Oh, no, I don't need the service because I filed bankruptcy. Well, I mean, it's a good question because it does come up. Um, I think, and I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but I think that you have to have more conversation with an individual who chose to go that route. And here's why. Maybe they made the decision of bankruptcy because they didn't have enough information of truly understanding the long-term consequences. So let's go ahead and help rescue them. But when it comes to someone who might feel like that's just the way out, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Who cares about the repercussions? You know, it's like they say, the way you do one thing, a lot of times is the way you do most things. So that mindset could potentially be a concern. But with regards to bankruptcy, it is correct that that solved the issue at hand right then and there with regards to the accounts and what they were, what they, what they were being pursued to pay 
and the balances they owed. But at the end of the day, credit restoration is going to be the only key and solution to helping them now recover from that. And, you know, the bankruptcy is not going to do anything with regards to removing the negative aspects that are being reported to the credit bureaus. So that's where we step in or that's where our protection plan membership steps in to help. So hopefully that helps. You did good. You did good. I'll take it. Thank you. I passed. I passed. <laughs> yep, yep. You from You're Long Island. Of course you passed. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate it. So um, unless there's any other burning question, it's 655. As I said, I'll get this recording out. Uh, but, you know, we're here to keep serving you just as overall Monday through Friday. It's the holidays. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. We'll have continued core rank training sessions. Now for this evening as well, we do have a shift and an adjustment with regards to our schedule. We do want to still satisfy um, serving by offering the Q&A session. So that will be happening. But in addition to that, we're gonna have our VP University, our Millionaire Mindset Training tonight at nine o'clock instead of the usual Mondays because of the holiday in observance of Labor Day. And then we will have the Q&A session at eight o'clock as well. There's a specific link and password for that, but we will have our path to financial freedom where you can invite your potential candidates and potential clients or agents for eight o'clock. Again, that's in our band calendar. And again, Millionaire Mindset, VP University training, 9 p.m. tonight. It'll be streamed live, which is done every week, as well as on the Zoom. And our Team Relentless Tuesday, 10 p.m. training session has been postponed. It'll be for next week. But uh, stay plugged in, stay connected. It's definitely great to be able to see you all here and just watching the growth is something that um, is truly, truly fulfilling. So God bless. Uh, much congratulations to all of your success so far. Let's keep climbing and taking this to the top, y'all. Take care. I'll see y'all online next time. Amen.